lovely to see people face to face. We're not on a screen, we're not just talking on the phone or a text or a message, we're actually in each other's physical presence. And I want to thank you all for adhering to the uh, rules we live within and we live with them in them every day and it's just so wonderful to see you all. It's so wonderful to see a little baby, Isla, who's eight months old, but she's here today. We've waited a long time for this, and it's lovely to have a newly engaged couple in the house, Hayley and Caleb. We've got a newly married man down the back of the sound desk, Donald. celebrate and as the weeks go by we'll highlight and talk about these wonderful exciting happenings that have happened. You know today we wanted to make this worship, this very first return to worship, all about praising God and as Colin and I were, were playing and we talked about, I, I couldn't get this verse out of my head, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Raise a hallelujah. Let's raise hallelujahs today as we praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. A lot of things that have breath have given us life in this time, haven't they? I know pets have been a big thing during COVID. They've brought a lot of comfort to people. People have planted gardens or done different things with the garden. And whilst we might not think breath is in a plant, we need the air for the plants to grow, don't we? So let everything that has breath, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And that's our focus today, friends. I pray that you have a prayer of praise on your heart, that you have a word of praise on your heart. I have given out six verses that are really great praise verses. If you were given a verse this morning, could you stand up for me, please? And I'm going to move around and just help you with your microphone. And we'll hear verses of praise. And if you want to yell out hallelujah after a verse, I think that would be a really appropriate thing to do. Start with Caleb. I'll praise the Lord as long as I live. I'll sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Chris. Lord, teach me what you want me to do, and I will live by your truth. Teach me to respect you completely. Lord my God, I will praise you with all my heart. I will honor your name forever. You have a great love for me. You have saved me from death. Amen. 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 That's a great hallelujah verse, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, Michelle. Psalm 28, verse 7. Praise the Lord, his my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart rejoices, and I praise him with my song. Yes. Yeah. Very appropriate, Michelle. Very. A new grandmother during COVID. Right there. Yeah. Psalms 57, verse 7. It says, My heart is right, my God. My heart is right. I will sing and praise you. Beautiful. My heart is right. It's wonderful. And David down the back. And another verse from the Psalms. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last day. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Jocelyn. And to Jocelyn, mother of Isla. Psalm 64, 10. The righteous one rejoices in the Lord and takes refuge in him. All those who are upright in heart will offer praise. Beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that we're all upright in heart this morning. Upright in heart, with our hearts up, lifting our voices. Every one of us has a breath today. Are you grateful for that? We have a breath. We can breathe in, we can fill our lungs, and we can exhale praise. And we want to do that today in a little while after we've had some singing.
singing. We're going to have a sharing time. What is on your heart today? What do you want to share with your breath that you would want to praise the Lord for? We've allowed time for this. So we want to hear from you. What is it that you want to give praise to the Lord for? For being in his house? For knowing he is present with us? And he will never leave us? nor forsake us. We have so, such a blessed life. So I want to say to you this morning, let everyone, everyone that has breath praise the Lord this morning. And the best response would be a hallelujah. I didn't get to say anything. It just happened like that. You've seen the, I don't know if you've seen the movie, have you seen the movie where the guy said, Robin Williams, a marvellous actor, you know, so skilled, so talented, and yet he's, uh, he's passed on, he's got depression, he took his own life. But in this movie, he says, good morning, Vietnam. Do you remember that, or have you seen that movie? Have you seen that movie? Good morning, Tobinong. You know, I was listening to some of the some of the words that were shared this morning, and they're powerful words. Every account that we've shared this morning verbally has been a great statement. And I'm sure that there's lots of great vibrant statements just, just crying to be let out. Would that be right? Yes. Praises to God because we have a lot to be grateful for. God is a wonderful, personal, saviour, friend, comforter, doer of miracles. And we can all testify to that. Well, it's really wonderful for me, and well, for, well, for me, I speak for myself, to be here sharing a fellowship with you all together. It's such a pleasure. And what we're doing is we're bringing our own petitions and, uh, and praises to God, and we've brought them here in a, a room of kindred spirits. We're kindred spirits. And we're entwining our words of praise and our words of worship and our actions in worship, we're entwining those with everybody else's and we're just, wow, we should be just so jubilant to be here this morning praising God. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Thank you very much. I needed that, Steve. You're a blessing. And I, and I was, well, we won't jump the gun. God is with us, continuing to create and recreating through Jesus Christ and filling his church with his spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's make that last statement together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great. We're getting there. I know it's, uh, it's been quite a few months. We're a little out of practice. But let's not be too reserved this morning. You know, if we could have bought a cake out, we would have done that. If we had some of those explosive devices that throws confetti into the room, we'd have done that. But uh, someone would have had to clean up. And it wouldn't be me. The word hallelujah, we miss George, you know, to be great George is here, although we've had an amen, we've had a few other responses. The word hallelujah in the, is the English translation of the Hebrew for praise the Lord. Did you know that? So when you say hallelujah, you're saying praise the Lord. And uh, George would have helped punctuate that this morning because he, like all of us, has a lot to be thankful for, to praise God for. And in doing so, he expresses praise for who God is and for the Lord's generous provisions for intervening in despair and even in the mundane. God intervenes even in the mundane and provides hope-filled solutions and affirmations according to his will. He affirms us. God affirms us as we praise his name. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Steve. You should come and stand here with me. Every time I just glance you away, just give me that. That'll be good. 
That's worth hallelujah. That's in the text. Thank you very much. We've had a banquet of hallelujahs, more or less. Hallelujah stories today. So we thank you, God. Prayer. Statements of praise towards God. And I've been immeasurably encouraged over these uh, past months as I've seen God at work. You know, uh, we haven't been able to come together and share that as much as we'd like. But you hear pockets of wonderful things happening in people's lives. And we've got a lot to be praising God for. And I mean, I'm not wanting us to be nostalgic this morning. I'm not wanting us to be too reserved this morning. I want us to tear our hearts open and pour out our praises to God this morning. And for some that might mean that you want to come to the place of prayer this morning. And just stand here and just say what you want to say to God full of praise. And you might think, well, that's just because we're all together and I'm just in the mood or, or something like that. But it's not about feelings. It's about taking an opportunity that God, God just taps us on the shoulder and says, You, I want you to stand up before your brothers and sisters and declare, declare how close we are as loved ones. Praising God is so much a part of the Yahweh and Christian culture that the book of Psalms it actually means the book of hallelujahs. And in some way, every psalm tends to praise God. There's even a group of psalms called the, the uh, praise psalms. Psalms 113 through to Psalms 118. They're the praise psalms that we can shout out in, our, in the privacy of our own house. In a time of devotions, whisper them. Whatever way we do, we praise God because He has come upon us in a marvelous personal way. Every one of us, all uh, 62 people, theoretically, I mean, I'm a little loud. Uh, uh, 60, 60, 61. Anyway. There are literally thousands of examples in Scripture of, I haven't improved. Have you noticed that? I haven't improved. I do digress. There are literally thousands of examples in Scripture of people praising God. And there, and there is guidance too in Scriptures for us concerning the integrity of our praise. It's not just you know, it's not just statements that you might make to someone passing by and say, hey, that's a nice frock you've got on today, or that's a nice, uh, uh, you've just been to the hairdresser and have your hair done, that looks spectacular there, uh, Robert. It's not like that. This is the deep, meaningful relationship we have with God. God, who created the world, who created us individually, purposefully. God, so there's guidance in Scripture concerning the integrity of our praise. You see, praise must rise up to God from the heart. Praise must rise up to God from the heart. And a number of Bible texts exist to support that. They will say, I will praise the Lord with all my heart. All my heart. Not just a part. Not just a token. All of it. And I'm going to live in that space. And I'm going to enjoy that space. And I'm going to say thank you God for that space. Now when scripture builds advice around the word heart. It most, offers, it most often partners this advice with quality. And the word that best explains this quality is the best. The best. Praise then must be our very best praise. If it is to honour God. And if it honours God, God blesses us. And we don't do it for that neat circle, but rather we do it first of all, first and foremost, because God is who He is. And we'll come to that in a moment. Expressing, expressing Psalms in the face of life's challenges enhances your faith and denies Satan a foothold in your heartfelt disappointments. Just drink in that for a moment. Expressing praise in the face of life's challenges. I heard Lynn talk about her five weeks in hospital and her little trip, you know. And here she is today, looking for an opportunity to praise God through that. And she's got a direct link to her neighbours more than ever before, a spiritual link. Is that right, Lynn? Is that what you're saying? A friendly link. Friendly link can quite easily, with God's anointing, become the link that brings them into the kingdom. Let's, let's grab a hold of that. In scripture, the word heart is interpreted most commonly as feelings, personal will, and intellect. 
If our praise is to rise with joy from the heart, then that's the idea, then that translates to praise coming from the very best of our feelings towards God. That uh, my praise comes from the very best of my intentions concerning me and God. That my praise to God rises from the very best of my intelligence also. It wasn't scheduled there, but I appreciate it, Steve. <laughs> oh, I missed you, man. I missed you. I missed everybody. It's so good to be back together. So when you so when you praise God, release your praise joyfully from the heart. Release your praise joyfully from the heart. Go for it. Let it happen. Let it rip. Let the praises be known. And make sure that you are right with God in your own heart. And the way to deliver your best to God is to make sure that we are right with God. He always delivers the best to you. So why not mirror that as best we can and deliver our best to Him? Half-hearted or thoughtless praise will not suffice. It doesn't cut it. And why is that? Because God knows what's in our hearts. Let's always take that on board and note that God knows what's in our hearts. Psalm 44, Luke 16, Romans chapter 8. I've got a short story for you. Then a final comment. Then we're going to sing that great song we sang a little earlier. And at that point, if you feel that God is just showering you with the, with the blessings that belong to you, that is, are His gifts, and you want to praise His name, by all means, we'll share in praise together. A veteran Christian sat down to his morning devotions and wondered where he might begin on this occasion. Have you been there? Sat down and thought, my devotions now, where will I begin? He asked himself, where should my praise and thanksgiving begin? So he pondered his blessings. Born into a Christian family, a Christian upbringing, a, mem a memorable spiritual formation experience at a tender age that still had impact on him. Hmm. But he stopped there and he thought more deeply. When we turn to God, we offer him all our thoughts. Our deep thoughts are particularly helpful to him and to ourselves. So he stopped there and he thought a little more deeply. Is this where my praise and thanksgiving should really start? Is that the starting point? He asked himself. You know, when you challenge yourself, God could well be the voice that you listen to. When you realise that you've got shortcomings, when you realise that you've made the wrong statement, when you realise you've done the wrong thing, the voice you listen to concerning that could well be God's voice. It was then that God refreshed his heart with this personal spiritual lesson. A man in his senior years, never too old for God to speak to him, never too deaf for him to listen to God. Sitting before the Master, taking in a new spiritual lesson because he asked about it. He asked God about it. Praise does not start with a recital of, the, of a list of past undeserved blessings. Rather, this man discovered, this mature Christian man discovered something that was pertinent and relevant to us today. Praise and thanksgiving starts with praising God Himself as Creator. Praising Jesus Christ as personal Saviour. And praising the Holy Spirit, and I love this one, praising the Holy Spirit as the spiritual tutor. Spiritual tutor. I love that one, but it doesn't mean I don't love the others as well. Nothing thoughtless there. All well ordered before God. Friends, God knows when we're half listening. 
God knows when we're half engaged. God knows when we're half committed or just simply half-hearted. He knows when we're thoughtless and dejected and not actively preparing ourselves in the heart and mind for what God wants to place within us. And that's when we struggle to praise the Lord. That's when we really struggle to say, thank you, God, those times. Jesus spoke quite frankly to the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15 about this, saying that their hearts, their hearts did not match the words of praise they offered God. That means their praise was shallow and ineffective. There was a noticeable disconnect between what was in their hearts and the phrases of praise they placed before the Lord God Almighty. And I'm glad, I'm glad that that's not our experience today. Finally, praise is expressed in many ways. The praise that has worth, whatever shape it is formed in, is the praise that joyfully rises from the heart, which itself is bowed in admiration and gratitude before God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And as such, praise leaves the believer with the, leaves the believer with a sweet taste, a residue of a sweet taste of spiritual awe and an ongoing appetite for more. Praise leaves within the believer the sweet taste of spiritual awe and an ongoing appetite for more. The most common uh, form of praise are the Psalms. We see an absolute conviction that God says that he heals the sick, that he, that he mends the brokenhearted, that he showers his children with spiritual strength and purpose to which we rise up, endure and overcome all troubles. Hallelujah. He leads us through darkness into glorious light. Hallelujah. We are here as a result of some kind of... Uh, disappointing darkness we've all endured, endured, been affected by and some far more than others. And we say thank you Father for bringing us well into your presence. Hallelujah. Praise can be expressed in a variety of ways but thoughtless and half-hearted praise is nothing more than a fabrication. Let's be real Let's be real and noticeable and lift up our praises to God joyfully. Let's tear our hearts open and with great joy just allow our, our joyful praises to rise up and be an expression of our love and devotion and gratitude to God for who He is, for who His Son is and what He's done for us and who His Spirit is to us as a spiritual tutor. God will refresh and renew our hearts. He will put a new spirit in us as we let our praises rise joyfully and run free in our acknowledgement of God. God is our refuge in times of trouble. He will protect you and, re and so you can rejoice and praise Him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise 